This video is a continuation of my posts on the development of SWAT, an Xbox and PlayStation 2 game I worked on in the late 1990s. If you haven't seen the first part, it's probably worth watching that first to get some background. During the early stages of development of the Xbox engine, another project started up and we decided to share the rendering technology. That project was called Orchid, and we named the engine we shared Ochre for Orchid and Cleaner's rendering engine. Of course, a much cooler name would have been Core, but by the time we realised that it was too late. The graphics coder on that project was Nick Hemmings, with whom many years later I started the C++ tools company ProFactor. His input was critical in the development of Ochre, and he was single-handedly responsible for the shared animation system OCAS, which was used on many other Argonaut products. As is often the case with games, sadly Orchid never amounted to anything, and eventually most of the team merged with SWAT. Other teams at Argonaut considered using Ochre, but for various reasons they stuck with their own engines. Lego Bionicle, Eye Ninja, and Catwoman used their own PS2 engine, from which we derived much of our PS2 code, and Carve had its own custom engine optimised for its particular needs. However, in its final incarnation, Ochre was used in the SCI game Urban Chaos Riot Response. The source artwork was created in Photoshop and 3D Studio Max. The various textures created were saved as target image files, TGAs, and 3D Geometry was exported by our own custom 3ds Max plugin into a tagged data format called ACFF. ACFF was the Argonaut Common File Format, and many years later I'd discover that ACFF was very similar to Google's protocol buffers, except that ACFF was self-describing. We had looked at XML as a format, but the parsing time required and the on-disk size made this prohibitive. Incidentally, in this image, the guy in the poster in the background is Sefton Hill, the game's producer and now director at Rocksteady Games. The caption underneath reads, A Ceph bank is a safe bank. Textures were applied to models using a custom shader plugin, which allowed settings unique to Ochre to be configured inside 3D Studio Max. Ochre supported rich, for the time, shaders, allowing all sorts of cool effects to be placed in a material. The shaders were little scripts written in a domain-specific language describing how textures would be blended together, how UV coordinates should be interpreted, and how geometry should be modified. They compiled into bytecodes that were interpreted on the CPU, and then, on Xbox, into vertex and pixel shaders. The Xbox engine would combine up to four textures in this way to give the appearance of flickering computer screens, moving conveyor belts, etc. On the PS2, we only supported a very simple shader system with a single texture. In this contrived example shader, you can see three textures are being blended together. Here we define the first texture, Badger, whose texture mapping will by default come from the geometry it's applied to. Next, we define the Ammo Crate 03 texture. Here, the UV coordinates are continuously rotated and offset from the default, and the mipmap level of detail is reduced. In this last texture, the mapping comes entirely from an external function, Environment, which would be used to simulate reflections. Finally, the shader defines what colour the output pixel would be. In this case, the colour comes from multiplying all three textures together, and the alpha value, the transparency information, comes from the first two textures, with the third texture's contribution being modulated by a sine wave. This is a contrived example, but one of our developers, Tim Rennie, was able to get a very simple Space Invaders style game written only using the shader system. Levels were laid out in a separate tool that imported ACFF level geometry and allowed level designers to place enemies, paths, triggers, scripts and so on into the game. Before geometry could be loaded into the engine it needed to be heavily processed. Some processing was common to both Xbox and PS2, for example splitting the maps into sensible chunks for culling and generating long lists of adjacent triangles called strips, but most was platform specific. On PS2 we would need to generate data suitable for sending to the graphics synthesizer via our custom written vector unit code. On Xbox the output was mostly various formats of Direct3D vertex buffers. Ochre loaded assets from DVD, in the case of the final game, the dev kit's hard disk for cached files, or else via a TCP connection to the developer's computer. Listening on that TCP port was a program called FileServe, which converted and served data files back to the engine. It did much more than that though, FileServe was also responsible for recursively generating the assets too. The game would ask for level 4.wad, or similar, and FileServe would follow a dependency chain, picking up and converting level geometry, character geometry, objects, all their associated textures and shaders, sounds, music tracks and AI configuration. This data would then be cached and sent back to the engine for loading. 
While we're here, I'd like to mention the key artists whose patience with our cranky tools and engine and sheer skill in bringing out the best in our rendering system can't be underestimated. Cheers to Jeff Vanell, Dave Hago and Alex Mallinson. In the next video, I'll go into some details of the geometry processing, including shadow generation. Thanks for watching, and if you want to be notified when there's a new video, don't forget to subscribe.